Good morning. May God's Spirit enlighten us so that we will be able to become witnesses to the divine word. First reading. The high priest, according to the letter to the Hebrews, came to establish a new covenant, a new pact, a new partnership, spiritual partnership with God. What would this new covenant look like, people? To accept God and says the Lord, This is the covenant I will establish with the house of Israel after those days. I will put my laws in their minds and I will write them upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. That is the reason why you are called. Every baptized person is called. Bukare, vocation, to be called. And your job description to help Christ establish the new covenant where God's laws will be in the minds of human beings and God will write upon their hearts this new covenant. He will be their God. They shall be their people. That's why you are baptized, every one of us. The teaching of the church is that every baptized person is called, has a vocation. Don't narrow it down to the calling of priests, brothers, and nuns. Once you are baptized, you are called to be a witness. And martyr, as Saint Fabian and Sebastian did give witness by their lives that is also our calling very few will be called to die but all are called to help establish the new covenant where kindness and truth shall meet according to the responsorial sum and in the gospel Jesus called the first 12 because we are also called what I would like to underscore this morning as we reflect on God's word in the letter to the Hebrews and the responsorial psalm and the gospel is that everyone who is called are called they are called for three reasons just like the apostles. So whether you are single, whether you are married, whether you are, whether you are married and have children, whether you enter the religious life, whether you were ordained, the gospel says you are called for three reasons, just like the twelve. First, we are called so that we might be with him. The most important part, that we might be with him. And that's why we reflect on God's word. That's why we receive his body and blood. So that we will be close to him. So that we can follow him. Come, follow me. He told the disciple. And we are, he is telling us now. Who follows me walks not in darkness. Especially the young today. They are walking in darkness. And they are suffering. It's your vocation to give a witness. And how do you give the witness that God wills for each one who is baptized? They might be with him, that he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. Yan gawain mo. Yan ang task mo. Yan ang job description mo. To be with him. Send them forth to free, preach and to have authority to drive out demons. 
There's a lot of demons in the world today. COVID-19, parang may bago na namang variant, devastated the planet. Then, almost a year ago, Vladimir Putin, in his desire, insane desire to hold on to power, invaded brutally Ukraine, had global consequences. Prices of food went up. Still going on. It might turn into a nuclear war. And according to the Pope, the third is climate change. Will kill more people through floods and drought and famine. Will kill more human beings than COVID-19. So here you are. You are called by God to establish a new covenant. You are called by God to be with Him and to preach the gospel and to drive out demons. Everything, anything that harms human beings and the environment, anything that kills is from the devil. Because our God is a God of life. Climate change will kill a lot of people. War will is now killing thousands of people on both sides of Russia and Ukraine. The economic disruption, especially the greed. Ang mahal na ng sibuya. Bumabaha yung sibuya sa atin noon. Ang maski last year. Murang-mura ang sibuya. Ngayon, hinord, tumaas, umabot na from 50 pesos last year, ngayon umabot ng 800 pesos. Kasakiman! Pagkagahaman! And I would like to remind you today as we reflect on God's Word. Nine Filipinos, nine individuals in our country. Ilan ang Pilipino? 120 million. So, 51% according to the Social Weather Survey consider themselves poor. Yung mga, mga research, there are even more poor people than just half. Pagpalagay na lang natin kalahati. Maralita. Yung kalahati ng Pilipinas, 60 million Pilipino. The bottom half, sabi ng Oxfam. Those living below the poverty line, pag ipunin mo yung kanilang kayamanan, maski katiting nila, titinda-tinda doon, nagkakargador kargador doon, nakikisaka kung paminsan-minsan bilang sakada, yung 60 million Pilipinos, ang equivalent ng yaman noong nine siyam na Pilipino. Na lagi nating nakikita yung pangalan nila na ten riches Pilipino. Yung nine lang dyan, kukunin mo. Pag ipunin mo yung yaman nila, katumbas na nung yaman nung kalahati ng 120 million Pilipino. I will put my laws in their minds and I will write them upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. And this God we believe in, his heart is breaking because of the injustice in the Philippines 500 years of Christianity. That's our calling. Ang problema, hindi natin alam ang tunay na kahulugan ng pagtawag sa atin bilang Christian. Basta makapagsanto ninyo ka dyan, makapag nas, nasareno ka doon, simba-simba ka pa minsan-minsan, tama na. I would like to remind you today, that is not enough. You are called to be with Christ, 
You are called to preach the good news, and you are called to drive out inequality, injustice in the world today. The Philippines is not living according to God's will because of the injustice. Nine Filipinos, 60 million Filipinos, equal lang yan sila. We are destroying the environment. So let us pray today through the intercession of St. Fabian, Pope, St. Sebastian, both martyrs, that we will also be a witness to our faith, that we will do something so that this situation that breaks God's heart, the scandalous inequality in the Philippines today, na nagyayabang na 90 million Catholics na masolusyonan natin. Ano bang strategy natin? So ipagdasal ninyo yung strategy ng SBD, Divine World Missionaries. Sampung million na mga batang kabataang tumigil ng pag-aaral, papaaralin using online pedagogies, using computers, pagdasal ninyo, nalalakas naman yung signal na ang mga kumpanyang nagbibigay ng signal, pag-aari ng mga kasama siguro doon sa Siam na pinakamayama. Magbahagi naman sila ng kanilang gayaman para mapaaral itong 10 million by 2030. We will organize a network through an e-commerce platform. One million Filipinos by 2030. Kasi yun ang deadline ng United Nations. If by 2030, hindi natin mabawasan yung pag-init ng planeta, tuloy-tuloy na yung climate change and hundreds of millions will die in the coming 100 years. One million farmers, organic farming. Last week, I was in Mulanay. They are organizing the Bundok Peninsula and there's already 4,000 farmers, agrarian reform beneficiary that will benefit from this project. Pagdasal niya lang. At ang pangatlo, 1 billion bamboo supportado na ng Catholic Bishops Conference yan ng NASA at Caritas Philippines. Patanim ng 1 billion bamboo against climate change, 1 billion bamboo against erosion and flooding, and 1 billion bamboo to give jobs to the poorest of the poor. Para matupad natin, concretely, sabi ng Santa Papa, magbilangan na tayo. Anong ginagawa mo? Ilang puno ang tinanin mo? Ilang kawayan? Laudato si Action Platform. So mag-aral naman kayo ng Catholic Social Doctrine para magiging karapat-dapat tayo na tawagin Kristiyano. Para maging karapat-dapat naman tayo, tawagin tagasunod ni Kristo. He appointed the twelve. They might be with him, that he might send them forth to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. The same calling for every Christian, for every Filipino who has been baptized and shares in the being priest, being king, and being prophet of our Lord Jesus Christ, the same Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever.